Yo, welcome to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and the Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Anyway, today I'm going to be reviewing another Stephen Donaldson novel, and that is The Gap Into Conflict, The Real Story, book number one in Stephen Donaldson's five-book epic space opera Gap series. Now, these books came out in the early 90s. This one specifically came out in 1991. Let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love uh, graphic design and cover illustration. I actually, um, before I get to that, I listened to the Audible.com version of this. The narrator was Scott Brick. He did a great job. I followed along in the book as, I was, as it was being narrated. The cover is done by an um, artist named Chris Hopkins. It's a good cover. I, I mean, I, it's, it's decent, I guess. I mean, I like the covers on the rest of the series a little bit better. You can see right there. Um, those are done by Steve or Paul Yule. I can't remember which Yule brother did those covers, but I like them a little bit better than this one. And I've, of course, I've got my entire Stephen Donaldson collection up here. I should probably show you. I've actually met Stephen Donaldson a couple times. Um... The only books that I do have signed by him are are, the, are this series here, the Mirror of His Her Dream series. He did sign these for me. Anyway, right there. Anyway, I just thought I'd show them. You know, I always I always show off my signed books. Anyway, let's get to business. Let's talk about this book here, The Gap into Conflict: The Real Story. Um, so this book is controversial. It is the opening. This would be comparable. Um, this would, like the Lord of the Rings has The Hobbit as sort of its setup book, its prologue book. Consider this small book, because it's a tiny. These are huge six, seven hundred page epic, page epic novels. This one's only about 200 pages. It's kind of like The Hobbit version. I mean, it's like the opening, like the Hobbit is the opening of the Lord of the Rings. This is the opening of the Gap Cycle series. Um, so I compare it to the Hobbit. Just, this is way more rapey than the Hobbit. That is all I have to say. I mean, it just is. If you've read Stephen Donaldson books, you know there's a lot of um, sex abuse going on very early in each one of his stories. Um, and this is no different. Uh, this is Stephen Donaldson. And if you and if you've kind of know any of the history of this series and why it came about. Stephen Donaldson said this was his idea. He wanted to write a space opera riff off of uh, Wagner's Ring Cycle. So that's what we've got. Um, and even Donaldson himself says that he was uncomfortable writing a lot of the scenes in this book um, just because he thought, what are people going to think of me? They already think I'm kind of creepy for the beginning of Lord Fowl's Bane, and if you've read that book, you know what I'm talking about. It's like they're going to really be thinking I'm creepy if I open up another big, massive science fiction series with the same themes of sexual abuse. Um, so he's worried, and he he, he freely admits that um, he, he it bothered him. It bothered him. It bothers him to this day. So... He also wanted to write a story that had a theme where the um, victims and the villains and the heroes all swap roles throughout the um, series, you know, sort of how in Game of Thrones we at first hated Jamie Lannister and then by book three we're kind of like rooting for the guy a little bit. That's kind of what he wanted to do with this. What's it about? It's a space opera. It's about space miners and space pirates and really cool and badass space ships. Um, on the jacket flap, it says, uh, I'll just read the jacket flap. Angus Therm Thermopylae was an ore pirate and a murderer. The most des disreputable asteroid pilot of the Delta Sector. Um... Anyway, everybody got out of his way. I mean, this, this dude's a bad dude. Anyway, he comes across um, Morn Highland, 
And uh, it's a really cool scene where um, Morn Highland is on her father's spaceship, and her father's spaceship is this badass spaceship that goes and tracks down space pirates. And they're tracking down Thermopylae, Thermopylae, and they find him. But the gap, we got to talk about the gap first. I was going to read this, but I decided I'm just going to explain it. There's the gap. The gap is light speed travel. Now, the gap, some people can travel at light speed just fine. Other people, it makes them sick. And some people, it actually makes mentally ill. So about one out of every hundred people suffers mental illness if they travel light the speed of light. And the only way that you can uh, make sure that you don't get mental illness is you have to have this thing implanted in you. Well, if you get the thing implanted in you that keeps you from getting gap sickness, people can use that thing and they can uh, control you. It's like a it's like a mind control device. So very few people want to get the mind control by a device implanted inside of them just so they can light speed travel. They just don't light speed travel. But anyway, Morn Highland is on her father's ship and this is her first gap trip and she goes bonkers on the ship. And I won't tell you what happens, but they're chasing Thermopylae and long story short, she gets mentally ill, things go bad for her and her ship, and the bad guy, the bad pirate Thermopylae, kidnaps her and destroys the ship. And it, uh, that's a little bit of a plot point that I gave away. Anyway, but this is the big thing, is it's about kidnapping, implanting someone, giving someone this implant so that you can control everything that they do and the ramifications of that. And as you can imagine, if somebody... Because Morn Highland is just a, um, you know, she's like everybody else in a book. She's super hot. She's super hot. And Thermopylae is like this pirate, like this goofy, awkward, not very socially, uh, you know, adept dude. And now he's got control over this um, chick. And so that's the setup. That's the setup. Now, there's another guy, Nick Sicorso who's sort of our hero. So we've got our hero, Nick Sicorso. Is he going to be the one that rescues our damsel in distress, Morn Highland, because she is the victim. So the hero is Nick Sicorso, the victim is Morn Highland, and the villain is Thermopylae, who has kidnapped Morn and implanted this device in her so she can still travel at the speed of light, but not become mentally ill while doing so. So that's the story. There's only the three characters. And those three characters are the only characters we meet in this book. But it is an absolutely superbly written space opera with some of the coolest space opera ideas in it. Some of the coolest spaceships and some of the coolest ideas about speed of light travel and all that. It's just... It starts out rough. People don't like... The people that give up on this series give up on this book because they just don't want to read about sex tor and torture. Torture and sex. They don't want to read about that. If you can get past this book, though, this is probably one of... And if Maybe if you saw my top science fiction series of all time, you know that this series finished really high on that list. It is one of the greatest space opera series you're ever going to read. If you can stomach reading through this book. It is rough. It's rough. I will admit, it's rough. And I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. Um, because even myself, I don't know if I'm comfortable with the themes in this. However, the rest of the series is absolutely readable and dynamite. So anyway, that is my take on The Real Story Gap into Conflict by Stephen R. Donaldson, one of our greatest science fiction and fantasy writers of all time. Read it. 